the true reason why the F-22 Raptor can kill anything in the sky. With Russia and China deploying advanced new fighters and surface-to-air missiles, or SAM, the task of gaining and maintaining air superiority over an increasingly more lethal battle space falls to a small and elite group of U.S. Air Force pilots flying the mighty Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. Conceived during the waning years of the Cold War, the stealthy high-flying supersonically cruising Raptor was designed to defeat the most fearsome weapons the Soviet Union could hurl at the United States and NATO during a third world war in Europe. However, with the end of the Cold War and subsequent 1991 collapse of the Soviet Union, the F-22 was left without a mission, or so it was thought. Indeed, the second Bush and Obama administrations canceled the F-22 program in 2008 after only 195 aircraft, 187 production planes, were ordered because they made the assumption that high-end state-on-state -state conflicts were a relic of the past. However, as it is becoming increasingly apparent, they were wrong. Why America needs the F-22 Raptor now more than ever. Now, with voices on the left and right clamoring for action in Syria, where the Kremlin is propping up its longtime ally, the Assad regime, the Pentagon finds that it has to rely on its tiny fleet of the 186 F-22 Raptors if the call comes to establish a no-fly zone or a safe zone in the war-torn nation. The Raptor is the only operational combat aircraft that the United States operates that Washington can rely on to take on and defeat advanced air defenses such as the Pantsir S-1, S-300 V-4, and S-400 that Moscow has dispatched to Syria. Moreover, it is the only aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory that possesses a huge performance overmatch against late-generation Russian fighters such as the Su-30SM Flanker H and Su-35S Flanker E, both of which the Kremlin has deployed to the region. Our role is to kick down the door. First fighter Wing Commander Colonel Pete Fessler, a veteran F-22 Raptor pilot, told me during a visit to Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, We are without a doubt on the leading edge of whatever force you're going to send because we have an airplane that has a capability that no one else has. But while it is important to have the right tools, more important is the human dimension. Pilots and maintainers must be trained and ready to defeat the highest end threats if they are to be sent into combat. The Raptor pilots, while they are a critical component, are still just one part of a team. Nothing is going to happen unless the maintainers can get the airplanes running. The low observable maintainers can keep the skin healthy, the munitions guys can build the bombs and the missiles, and the weapons loaders can get them on the airplane, the air traffic controllers can launch them, then intel folks can prep the pilots for the mission they're going to do. All these things have to come together, and if they get out of sync, none of it works. The Ultimate Insurance Policy in many ways, the Raptor is the U.S. Air Force's insurance policy. While the rest of the Air Force has been preparing for and fighting low-intensity warfare scenarios, as an elite vanguard force, the Raptor fleet has focused almost exclusively on defeating the highest-end threats. We've been focused on the high-end threat all along, Fessler said. In fact, the departure from standard for us is the times we go over to Operation Inherent Resolve, the counter-ISIS campaign, and do the close air support type missions over there. Low-intensity conflict is not our bread and butter. Even since the earliest days when the Raptor entered operational testing in 2002, the F-22 has performed incredibly well in simulated combat, amassing lopsided victories in the air. Even when flying against the most challenging simulated threats, advanced Russian fighters such as the Su-35 and S-300 V-4 and S-400, it is exceedingly rare for an F-22 to be shot down. Losses in the F-22 are a rarity regardless of the threat we're training against, Fessler said. Why the Raptor dominates Indeed, one of the problems for the F-22 is to generate enough targets and a tough enough threat so that pilots get some useful training. Another problem is that the jet is so capable in terms of its sheer speed, acceleration, stealth, sensors, and maneuverability, it actually compensates for tactical errors. It makes up for a lot of shortcomings in the pilot side. You can have a really bad day, and an airplane will still do phenomenally well, said one senior F-22 pilot who goes by the call sign Crash. Just because you win the fight doesn't mean you did well. Just because you lost doesn't mean you screwed up. We build scenarios to track that. So there are times when guys will die in training when they did everything right, and there's other times dudes are screwing up left and right and they're completely successful. But in this airplane, it is much easier to survive.
Because the jet is so capable, and the pilots are the elite of the elite, the red air has to effectively overwhelm the Raptors with sheer numbers. Indeed, Crash described one scenario where four F-22s took on 10 fourth-gen enemy aircraft, similar to a Su-35, simultaneously, and which regenerate or come back to life. A little bit more than your typical fourth gen, Crash said. We're not training against things that are not operational yet. We're fighting against the most advanced operational threats we can. Typically, the blue F-22s will slaughter the enemy from long range. Indeed, as Fessler notes, if an enemy aircraft has survived to enter the merge or visual range combat and finds a Raptor, something has gone terribly wrong. That usually leads to an intensive debrief to understand what went wrong. Indeed, all the pilots I spoke to unanimously agreed that the debrief is the most important part of a training sort. Nonetheless, F-22 pilots train extensively for a visual range fight. We usually train full up versus full up, Crash said. We assume that a Western trained F-22 is going to be the most challenging threat we're going to go against. A big upgrade and something needed. One recent addition to the Raptors at Langley is the new Block 3.2A Update 5 software. At long last, the new upgrade adds the Raytheon AIM 9X Sidewinder High Off Boresight Missile, something long coveted by the F-22 community. The addition of the AIM 9X is a huge improvement for the Raptor, all of the pilots at the first fighter wing that I spoke to told me. The addition of the new weapon greatly increases the F-22's already formidable lethality. That's even though the Upgrade 5 is an interim capability. The AIM-9X and the Raytheon AIM-120D AMRAM missiles will be fully integrated onto the Raptor with the Increment 3.2B upgrade, which is yet to be fielded. The one thing that the F-22 is still lacking is a helmet-mounted queuing system, or HMCS, that would be used to exploit the outer edges of the AIM-9X's capabilities. It's a feature that is common on most U.S. fighter aircraft and most foreign ones. The lack of such a system would normally place the Raptor at a severe disadvantage in a dogfight if the aircraft didn't perform as well as it does. The Air Force is still planning on adding the HMCS to the F-22, but pilots at the first fighter wing say that it's not an absolute necessity. The Raptor can usually dominate a fight even without such a system. Indeed, as Fessler noted, even without the AIM-9X or an HMCS, F-22 pilots often close into gun range and ambush other jets in a visual range. I can sneak up on a guy, Fessler said. In the F-22, I convert on guys and they never even see you there. You roll up right behind them and go, why waste a missile when you have a gun? Ultimately, as the U.S. Air Force's only dedicated fifth-generation air superiority fighter in an increasingly hostile world where the threat grows more challenging every day, it is in the service's best interest to ensure the Raptor remains as capable as possible. Right now, the Air Force is slated to equip the F-22 with a helmet-mounted sight by 2020, but similar efforts have fallen prey to budget cuts in the past. The helmet would be awesome to have, but it's not a game-changer for us, Crash said, but a helmet-mounted sight would help us a lot.